guys. Welcome to Tutor Sisters channel. Please subscribe to our channel to help us grow. Today, we are going to talk about the four levels of Garner Among Ghosts written by Magazine Hong Kingston. First of all, let's talk about the literal comprehension. After Magazine Hong Kingston's parents come to America from China in 1930s, she was born in Berkeley, California and lives with her husband and child in Honolulu. The given essay is taken from her autobiography, The Woman Warrior. Memoir of a Girl Among Ghosts, 1976. The ghost Kingston refers to are of two types. The spirit that the Chinese believe in and the Americans who feel extremely alien to her. Long ago, knot makers used varieties of knots for fashion purposes. This knot making tradition was banned after a knot maker made a knot so complicated that it ended up blinding him. The writer feels that she would be an outlaw knot maker if she were in China during that period. She feels as if that is the reason why her mother cut her tongue. However, mother asserts that she did it so that the writer would not become tongue-tied and speak different languages. But the writer still finds difficulty in speaking. She was still unable to form proper sentences and ask a question. She wishes either her mother should have cut her tongue completely or she shouldn't have tempered with it at all. She was completely silent during the first three years of her school. Her sister didn't speak either. She didn't speak to anyone at school and was often bullied by the Japanese. She liked the black students because they would stand up for her and try to talk to her. In a school, she would make paintings filled with black color one, and when the teachers saw this, they called her parents. However, her parents took it lightly. In American school, when she had to read out loud, she would experience strain to even pronounce I and hear. She found it completely different from the Chinese ones. When the second grade class did a play, everyone except the Chinese girl went to auditorium. After American school, the Chinese students went to the Chinese school where they were loud and playful. Unlike American teachers, the Chinese teachers didn't make them read out loud. The students that were so well behaved at the American school were loud and mischievous here. However, a new teacher at the Chinese school said the student had to get up and recite in front of the class. When the speaker's sister was called, she found it extremely sternness to read. However, even with her squeaking voice, she completed it. After that, the writer was called to read as well. She was glad she didn't whisper. Now, we will be talking about the interpretation part. The essay depicts the struggle of bilingual children and immigrants in the United States. The mother enrolled the writer in both American and Chinese school so that they would be able to speak both languages. However, she wasn't able to speak either of those languages fluently. She does not talk about her friends, so she could have difficulty making friends because of her ethnicity. Moreover, the black painting she painted could have been a representation of her inner feelings. Just like the black painting, she found her light dark and lifeless. The text also compares the education system in America and China and how they are polar opposites. It further demonstrates the discriminative culture in America and how even the teachers discriminated among the students. It also points out that instead of helping students by encouraging them, the teacher demo demotivated them with their loud voice and punishment. Furthermore, it focuses on the identity crisis that the writer felt. She found difficulty in reading I and hear. This may be because she didn't feel like she was one of the Americans and she didn't find America welcoming and homely. She might have felt like each of her legs was in different boat. She didn't belong to either side completely. It also points out the disturbing tradition in China that is cutting children's tongue so that they can speak freely. The ironic part is that she finds difficulty in speaking because of her tongue that is cut. 
The reason for cutting tongue may be that women are not allowed to talk much in a male dominated society like China. Now we will be talking about the critical thinking part. Through this autobiography, King Stung succeeded in deep piecing several information and relation. Which makes a story so credible is the honesty of the telling it from her own view not from someone else. It is true portrayal of difficulties faced by immigrants in balancing and adjusting to the foreign countries. However, there are certain details that I find unconvincing. How could a mother so easily cut off their own children tongue? Moreover, the mother doesn't even seem remotely disturbed at answering why she did it. Why did one listen need to have her tongue cut and not her siblings and cousins? Moreover, throughout the essay, Magazine focus on reading English but she does not read Chinese very easily either. So was it really reading a new language that made it difficult or her own lack of confidence? She says she painted all black paintings. Should not her parents have been worried about that? She also seems to be mad at her mother for cutting her tongue and tempering with her speech. So why doesn't she confront her mother instead of bottling off her feelings? She does not feel at home in America, but she doesn't try to socialize either. Furthermore, she says she would have been an outlaw not maker, meaning she would have been a rebellious. However, she does not seem to even complain about anything that caused her discomfort. Despite these questionable teeny details, I admire Magazine's courage to sum up her difficult times and showcase them to the world. Finally, we will be talking about the assimilation part. After reading this text, I realized that learning a new language can be extremely demanding. It also brought me face to face with the difficulties one felt in a new land and taught me to be kind and compassionate towards such foreign student. It also helped me to fathom the importance of self-confidence that action is always paramount towards. The essay reminds me of a bilingual friend I had in grade 2. She was fluent in Nevari but had difficulty in speaking Nepali. Many of my teachers and friends would mock her for her accent and speech. She became so discouraged that she stopped speaking at all and had to change school. So, thank you so much. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this.